thank you. That was uh, very interesting, and we'll be able to follow up with uh, questions uh, to Oksana later. Uh, now let me introduce uh, Ivan Miklos. As I said, he's the former Minister of Finance and uh, Deputy Vice Prime Minister of uh, Slovakia. He joined the Slovak government in 1998 uh, after Slovakia voted out uh, sort of an oligarchic uh, system that we had uh, in Ukraine uh, as well. And uh, he was one of the main engines of the Slovak reforms, including uh, tax uh, reform, budget reform, um, etc. Uh, Slovakia introduced a very successful tax reform in 2004, uh, after the introduction of uh, which uh, Slovakia was voted uh, by the World Bank as the number one reformer in the world, uh, I believe. And uh, Mr. Miklos uh, also was named uh, Minister of Finance of the year by Euromoney. Uh, we are very happy that uh, he has decided to contribute to Ukraine's uh, reform process. Uh, about uh, a year ago, he's been coming very frequently here, knows uh, many of the Ukraine politicians, and as I said, he's been recently uh, appointed uh, uh, advisor, key advisor to the Minister of Economy and to the Minister of Finance. Ivan, please. ask uh, what is the most important precondition for doing successful uh, reforms and successful transition, my answer is the political will. The political leadership, will, vision and courage. This is the most important. Without this it is simply impossible to do anything. If you look at the last year from this point of view, we have to say that it was achieved a lot because uh, during last year Ukraine has new strong president, new strong parliament, strong government, and all of these institutions, all of these leaders uh, have very strong mandate, reform mandate and integration mandate. And this is the most important precondition. Of course, it is only the first precondition. It will be necessary to do a lot of. And of course, I hope Ukraine will use experiences from other transition countries. We are now more, uh, almost 25 years, more than 25 years from the breakdown of communism. And we have a lot of both good and bad experience and Ukraine, I hope, will learn from, from this. What is the most important experience, in my opinion, is that countries which did really complex and radical reforms achieved also the best, the best results. The most important, in my opinion, is to achieve macroeconomic stabilization, especially fiscal consolidation, as soon as possible, and then also provide comprehensive package, complex package of structural reforms, including rule of law, but also other, other reforms. The main goal for these reforms, of course, is improving the life of the people. If we look at the transition countries from point, point of view of the convergence progress, we see clear picture. Countries which did this kind of complex, radical reforms achieved much, much better results. If you are speaking about approaching GDP per capita of the EU 15 Western European countries, during the last 10 years, from 2003 to 2013, we see the most successful countries were Baltics, Poland and Slovakia. Average convergence progress in this, of these five countries is 21.4% of GDP. These countries approach to the EU 15 level by more than 20% each of these this countries. On the other side, if you look at the countries which were much slower, which state has still stronger position in the economy, like Hungary or Slovenia, this convergence progress is significantly lower. In Hungary, it was only 7% during these 10 years, and in Slovenia, even less, only only 3%, which means we have, I think, in Ukraine now 
two messages. First one is, is, is bad message and the second one is good message. Bad message is that it will be difficult. It will be even more difficult as in these countries. We know all why. It will be very painful. It will be difficult, but good news is that it works. Good news is that if country is doing what is necessary to do, it can bring relatively quick results. Let me illustrate very briefly on my country experience. When, as uh, Tomas has mentioned, uh, in, in uh, second Zurinda's government between 2002 2006 was named the most success, most reformed government in the world. What we did, we did macroeconomic stabilization, fiscal consolidation, and also comprehensive package of reforms which have been prepared. All this package was prepared during one year, during 2003. And almost all these reforms started to operate from January 1st, 2004. During four years, 2004, 2008, our convergence progress was 16%. At the same time, Hungarian convergence progress was 1%. Czech progress was 3% and Polish 5%. Slovakia 16% in four years. That was the main reason why Slovakia at present has approximately the same GDP per capita as Czech Republic, despite when we started 20, 23 years ago after division of Czechoslovakia, Slovakian GDP was only 62% of Czech GDP per capita. I'm not saying this to be proud for our results. I'm saying this that if reforms are done really complexly, comprehensively, and, 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 and with, with strong vision, will, and courage, they can bring very, very quick results. In this regard, I think what will be the most important for Ukraine will be ownership of reforms. What I mean by ownership of reforms? By ownership of reforms, I mean that government has to do, and of course with close cooperation with the parliament, because this will be the most, the most difficult challenge will be to pass necessary legislation through the parliament. But what, what will be the most important is that government and parliament is doing coalition, is doing these reforms, not because pressure from outside, not because IMF, not because other institutions, because creditors, but because country needs it. Because for the future of Ukraine and Ukrainian people, it is necessary precondition to have better life. This is key importance. If you look at now, if you look at the Greece, you can see what are the consequences if policy, any government is doing, Greece policy, Greece government is doing, was doing reforms and changes only because pressure from outside. It has to be ownership, it has to be transparency, openness to the people, to tell people what is the situation, what we want to do, why we want to do, and how we want to do. And there are, there is bad experience from Greece, but there are also good experiences from countries which I have mentioned before, from Baltics, from Slovakia. In this regard, I have to say that if there was discontent of my government, me personally, uh, Baltic countries government, Georgian government with IMF, for instance, it was not discontent in this direction that you are pushing us to, to do too much reforms, we don't want to do it. It was on the contrary. And I can mention you, for instance, when I prepared it, I was finance minister at that time, tax reform, IMF mission said me, it was in 2003, oh, don't do it, it is too radical, it is too risky. Maybe you can do it in three years, maybe you can divide it in three years. And I said, no, it is only possible to do it now because now it is political window of opportunity. We did it and it brought really unexpected results, even for us unexpected. The, the results were much, much positive and I have to say that then, after, two, three years later, IMF representative said, Oh, you did very correct that you, 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 didn't, uh, you didn't hear us and you, you did these reforms. The same experience had Georgian government regarding tax reform, regarding uh, Economic Liberty Act, and the same experience had Latvia last time in 2008 when IMF pushed Latvia to, to strong devaluation and they did macroeconomic and fiscal consolidation without devaluation of course, with internal devaluation, which was much, much more politically sensitive and severe for Latvian economy. But it worked, and Latvia from 2011 is the highest growing economy in the European Union. Which means uh, the main message is, of course, this 
kind of political ownership, to do necessary reforms, not because outside pressure, but because needs of the, these changes and these reforms for the, for the country, for the, for the Ukraine. And of course, what will be the most complicated and the biggest challenge is not the technical part of reforms. Now, 25 years after experiences from transition, we have a lot of experiences, how to do tax reform, public administration reform, labor market reform, other reforms. The, I'm, I'm, I used to say that maybe 90% of the, of the challenge of the reforms is political part of the job. How to convince also politicians, also parliament, how to hold coalition together, how to, how to convince them about necessity of this. And in this regard, I have to say that there is also good news and bad news. Good news is that really Ukraine has now very, very competent and, and, and business-driven, action-driven uh, driven government. I, I know a lot of governments, but I think in this regard it is unique. Unique is also that there are a lot of young people we drive with, with uh, experiences from the, from the private sector, but it has also other side. This coin has also other side, and this, these are political experiences. Because finally, it is about politics. It is about communicating. It is about negotiating. It is about preparing this. And this is, of course, something which uh, I hope can, can also uh, operate and work because these people are so very, very, very flexible and they are able to, to learn. Uh, very, very quickly, but here in this area, in area of the negotiating and, and, and discussing with the, not only parliament, but with the public, it will be the biggest challenge for the, for the future, future uh, reforms. A last point let, uh, regarding um, corruption and the rule of law. This is, uh, of course, one of the most important, key importance uh, priority. <coughs> On the other side, I have to say that only don't to have too high expectations from new legislation, from new law. Because law is nice, but implementation is much, much more important, and it will be a problem. In my country, still, we are one of the most successful countries, but the biggest problem and the weakest point of the, of the institutional framework is, is rule of law. What was the most effective method for diminishing corruption was deregulation, liberalization, and privatization. And this is also quickest tools, how you can diminish the, 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 the corruption. This is not random that the lowest level of corruption in the all post-communist countries has Estonia. One of the main reasons of this is that Estonia was the first country who abolished, who liberalized regulation in the energy market. There was no space for creation of the oligarchs because oligarchs uh, were created on the regulated market, on this arbitrage between low regulated prices of the energy and, and high, high market, market prices. In this regard, it has key importance, not only for fiscal consolidation, but also for the fighting against corruption, deregulation of the, of the not only energy market, but deregula deregulation of the whole, whole economy and whole, whole society. And let me conclude that uh, I'm optimist. I'm optimist also because I see huge potential in the Ukraine. I see huge potential among people, not only in the government, but I met a lot of young, educated people which have vision, will, and courage to change the country, to change, uh, to change Ukraine. And uh, despite of all difficulties, including, uh, including the threat of the war, and let me Last point to tell this, Slovakia has very high Hungarian minority. Tomasz mentioned that in 98 we were on the edge of not only collapse but integration and isolation. Slovakia was excluded from the negotiations to, to enlarge European Union. At that time, and Slovakian government at that time, Mečiar, oligarchs, corrupted government, openly said that if they, they will not want us in the West, we will go to the East, to Russia. The country was really under threat, and at that time I personally felt threat, we have strong Hungarian minority. In case Slovakia is isolated, is not in the EU, Hungary is in the EU, potentially for the future I could imagine also threat of the, of the, of the unity and integration of the country. The best method how to strengthen unity, sovereignty of the country is to be successful economically, to be successful, to 
to, to have better condition, living conditions for all your inhabitants, uh, if, if they are Ukrainians, Russian, or, or, or other nationalities. In Slovakia, as I have mentioned, our convergence progress was three times higher during la last 10 years than in Hungary, which means Hungarians are satisfied. Not only them, all inhabitants in Slovakia are satisfied because they living of standard and living of conditions are good, are, are improving. Which means successful economic reforms are also very important precondition for holding country together and for, for, for to have uh, uh, unity and sovereignty of the, of, the, of the country. And I'm convinced that uh, Ukraine will be successful in this, in this regard. Thank you.